What's up guys? So in this tutorial, this is going to be a quick one. It, we're just going to look at the swipe to refresh uh, progress bar when using a scroll view. Okay, so if you don't know what I'm talking about, let me show you an example. So here, here we are, what we're going to have when we're done with this tutorial. And when you pull down, you get a bar that goes all the way across. And once it hits that, it'll start refreshing. And it'll do that for a few seconds, and when it's done, it'll go away. So uh, I know that the Gmail app does this, and a, a few other app, app applications do that. And I think it's a really good way in, in to implement something that uh, it's different from a progress bar, your everyday progress bar. And refreshing is something that's pretty vital in lots of mobile applications. You know, most of the time when you have any kind of data, you're going to have to refresh it. You don't want the user to have to exit out the application or go back in activity and come back. That's just, you know, that's just really annoying if you were to have to do that. So refreshing is something that is really important. And this is just a, just a cool way to do it. And it's actually really simple to implement, which is why I just wanted to throw it in one of these tutorials because, you know, it's really simple and it can be done with any kind of scroll view. So you can throw a list view in this and you know the list view will be able to scroll down just like this and you'll be able to be able to just implement it just the same way as you see here right now it's just a text view inside of a scroll view so just something to, to get on on screen really quick but a list view is usually the ideal thing that you'll be using but anything that that you can put inside of a scroll view will work okay so let's get started let me close this application and let's start a new project call it swipe refresh tutorial all right so as usual let's just take off the built-in stuff or the uh, the template that Xamarin gives us. Let's go into here. And let's open up our main layout. Okay. And what we're going to want to do, we're going to want to erase all of this. And we're going to want to basically add in the support library because the swipe refresh layout is inside of the of the report of uh, the support library which is where we're going to have to get a component of before which i've done in another tutorial but i'll do it again it's super simple but first let's let's go ahead and bring in the view okay so widget dot swipe refresh layout okay and then there's just the usual usual stuff here um, let's get this one okay so what we're gonna want to do is we're gonna want to put a scroll view inside of this okay and let's just go ahead and give this a few parameters the actual swipe refresh layout we're gonna need to give it an ID so that we can reference it in the code we'll call it swipe layout I hate how it's indented and sometimes it does that, but it usually formats it once you exit and come back in. Uh, let's do match parent for the width. And then we'll do for the height, match parent as well. So we want it to fill the entire screen. Okay. Next, we want to add, let me see if it'll reformat. All right, there it goes. Okay, next we want to add the actual scroll view. And we want this to match the parent as well. So we want it, this scroll view to actually fill the whole layout. Okay. Do the same thing for the height. All right, and then we're just going to put a text view inside of here like we saw a few moments ago. So 
let's just give it a few initialize some of its properties. Uh, we had it say pull down there. And we'll match parent. And for the height, we'll wrap content. And give it some margin. The margin top. Equals, and we'll give it 12. And last, we're going to give it a gravity. And we're going to want to center it. Okay, so it's in the center of the screen. All right, so let's go over here. Looks good. You can't really tell very much. Usually when you're importing some uh, custom library, the designer can't render that for you. So that's too bad, but looks good here. All right. Let's go inside the code into the main activity. And here's where we're actually going to instantiate the swipe refresh layout. Okay, so before we do that, actually, go over to your components because you're going to need to import this support library. So right click, get more components, and the Xamarin component store should pull up. Just type in support and download the support library version 4, add to app. It'll take a second and make sure that it referenced it, referenced it for you and installed it. So it should be good. So now let's go ahead and add that in. So swipe refresh layouts and swipe refresh layouts. All right. Now resolve and port the library that we just downloaded. All right. And here, let's grab a reference of it. Fresh layout. And there it is. Okay, so now we have a reference of it right here for the uh, object that we created inside of the XML file. Okay. Remember, all the XML file does is set content view main, which then inflates it and calls this guy's construct constructor, which is, which we don't have to do, it's already done for us, but it calls this guy's constructor. And then it sends that back to, uh, well, basically it instantiates this object. Okay, so just a little little uh, Android 101 for you guys, just in case you didn't know that. Um, okay, so the next thing we're going to want to do is we're going to want to actually give it the color. So we're going to want to call one of its methods called set color scheme. And this is the actual colors that you guys saw were, were coming in and out. You saw the blue, the red, the, the green. So here, here we can just set some standard colors, and you can set these to whatever you want. But so I'll, I'll set it to a but a to a blue, and you can set it all to one to one color if you really wanted to. But then you're not gonna get an effect. You know, you can set it to just two colors, and then just uh, send the two colors as as the parameters. But I'm gonna do all four, or all four different colors at least, because you have to do four, but but I'm gonna do some four different ones just to give a, a good effect. Let's do green light and last do resource dot color and we'll do red light. Okay. All right. So the next thing we're gonna want to do is uh, we're going to want to subscribe to the event refresh okay and the way we do that is plus equals tab tab in visual studio will go ahead and generate the method for us that's called when this guy's broadcast okay so usually in java what you'll have to do is you'll have to do something like set refresh listener so we set on refresh yeah so set on refresh listener and then you have to implement the listener. But Xamarin and C Sharp saves us a lot of time because we basically just have to, it does all that for us behind the scenes. So then we can just call upon this and subscribe to it with a method. And then this method method gets called when the refreshing happens. So this 
is basically going to happen when someone clicks refresh and we want to probably collect, grab some data from the server and bring it back and all that stuff. So we want to do it all in here. Okay. So we're not going to do that, but we're going to, but you're going to more than likely want to do it on a different thread because you're going to be doing a lot of work and you don't want to do it in the UI because then it's going to bog it down and it's going to, you'll be able to really see that it's, 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 it's really, uh, you know, taking up a lot of work and Andrew doesn't allow that anyway to, for web requests or any kind of webbing to be done on the same, the same, the main thread, the UI thread. Okay. So if you're going to do any kind of web requests or anything like that, you have to use some kind of uh, background worker or some kind of threading, which there's many ways to do, but .NET has a great class called background worker. And it's really great for, for things that aren't too intensive and, and pretty straightforward. And if you're not really familiar with doing with parallel, parallel systems or threading, then the background worker is something really good to, to just know because there's, it's really straightforward and it's, uh, it's great for just, you know, when you need to do something on a different thread and, and just get it done quickly. So here's what it's called. And we're going to need to import it. So go ahead and import it using the resolve and then using, okay. And the first thing we want to do with a worker is we're going to want to register an event, the do work event. And the do work event is the very important because this is the method that the code that is going to run on a separate thread. Okay. We'll run on separate thread. Okay. So keep that in mind and we'll implement that right now, which basically we could do now what we're going to do just to, just to simulate and emulate some, some work being done. We're just going to sleep it for a few seconds. So import thread, make sure you import using system.threading, not Java language, but system.threading. And then it has a static method called sleep and it's in milliseconds. So give it 3000 milliseconds. And so it'll sleep for three seconds. Okay. And the next thing we want to do is we want to register another event that fires when the worker is done. So after three seconds, in this case, this method will fire and will, will, uh, basically any kind of code that you want to run after the thread is done. So you've done your web request. Now you want to actually, uh, basically update the UI. So in this case, what you want to do is you want to come back to the white white refresh layout and we're going to want to set its, its, refreshing property to false. So that will make it stop refreshing. Okay. So let's do that now. And we'll do run UI th on UI thread because worker run worker complete should be work should run on the UI thread, but I've actually run into some problems where I just started writing code here and I was getting some weird errors and some runtime errors and I couldn't figure out what it was. And basically once I started using the run UI on UI thread method, it all went away. So I, I'm believing there's something, I don't know if it's still on a, on a background thread or I should still be on the UI thread, but there are some issues with that. So just to be safe, use run on UI thread and then anything, any code in here will be run on, on the UI thread. Okay. Which is what we want. So it wants an action. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay. This is the syntax for it. And what we want to do is, set its refreshing property to false. Okay. Add a semicolon here. Alrighty. So just a little breakdown of what's happening. Basically when this is pulled down, when the, when that view is pulled down, this gets fired. So we come into here, the worker is uh, instantiated and the worker dot do work comes into here, sleeps for three, three seconds. And then when it's done, it comes into here and it sets its refreshing property to false, which makes the colors, all that color animation disappear. Okay. And the last thing that we need to do is for the worker is to actually start it. And the way you do that is run worker a sync. Okay. So that will, that will start the thread up, which automatically calls the do work method. Okay. So let's go ahead and run this first. Let me go into here and change my minimum Android target to 15. 
Okay. And let's go ahead and run it and see what happens. Installing. Sometimes it takes longer than others. All right, sorry guys, I was having some trouble with my Visual Studio. It seems to have hung on something and I had to kill it from the task manager and restart it and everything. So, sorry about that. Let me go ahead and I got it built all over again. So, here we go. Here is the final product, okay? So, as you can see, all this is done for us. And as soon as it gets down, it'll start showing all the colors that we specify. Wait for three seconds and then as soon as it's done, this code will run and exit out. Okay. So pretty simple and pretty straightforward, which is why I wanted to throw in one of these tutorials. It's pretty, uh, seems like a pretty useful tool that can be used and utilized in many ways. But at the same time, it's not too intensive on yourself to, to create. Okay. So hope you guys can think of some, a lot of stuff to do with that. And I'll see you in the next tutorial.